The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is getting closer and closer to launch, but the closer we get, the more unanswered questions we end up with. With more and more footage being shown, you would expect some of these answers to clear themselves up, but it seems to be having the opposite effect. I'm Game Over Jesse, and here with me is RMFH Gaming to give our thoughts on the top 5 questions fans seem to have about Breath of the Wild. Number 1. How many dungeons will there be? This one has been on everyone's mind since rumors first began coming forth about Breath of the Wild. We first heard that the game will feature around 100 mini dungeons and 4 traditional dungeons. First reactions to this were, are you nuts, 100 mini dungeons? That would be insane! Seeing as most games have far less, that includes mini dungeons. On the other side, only 4 main dungeons might leave fans wanting more. But don't fret, Majora's Mask only had 4 dungeons, and it is looked at as one of the best in the series. However, rumors are rumors, and as far too many people say, should be taken with a grain of salt. But half of this rumor has been confirmed. During A3, and several times since, Nintendo has confirmed that there will be 100 mini dungeons, or what we know as shrines. Now, we just play the waiting game to see how many traditional dungeons we will get. Besides, playing 100 shrines with the same aesthetic and blue atmosphere would get a bit repetitive for someone going from shrine to shrine, and we would need a good amount of time in the overworld or lengthy traditional themed dungeons to kill that repetitiveness. If it turns out that we do only have 4 main dungeons, what I would like to see happen is the player being forced to return to an already completed dungeon to explore or unlock a new path inside of it. Think about it like this, in Ocarina of Time, Dodongo's Cavern is inside the bottom of Death Mountain, and on top of Death Mountain, deep inside, we have the Fire Temple. Imagine if instead of two completely separate dungeons, we just have one massive connected dungeon. You may require a certain item like bombs to make your way throughout the first part, then after you conquer this part of the dungeon, you continue on your journey and come across an NPC in a village or a certain item later in the game and it all of the sudden clicks. While inside of the first section of the dungeon you see a wall that you would have been able to claw shot or blow up, but since you didn't have the required item at the time, you simply ignored it. So now you return to this same dungeon, take a second or possibly third path that is now unlocked. This path could be far more dangerous and filled with even more complex puzzles or more powerful enemies. Maybe that thing we thought was the main boss in the first section of the dungeon, in this case King Dodongo, turns out to just be one of many several mini bosses and once we make it to the actual main boss of the dungeon, we are greeted by a flaming dragon to take on inside a room surrounding us with lava. Now, a more recent rumor suggests that each territory, like the Great Plateau, will have its own village and dungeon. This kind of falls into common sense, as major areas in past Zelda games have their own dungeon, and it has been half a year or longer since the original rumor of 100 mini dungeons and 4 main dungeons was leaked. So if it did happen to be 100% true at that time, Nintendo has had a lot of time to work on new dungeons. Remember, Majora's Mask was completed in a year. Yes, it reused assets like character models and items from Ocarina of Time, but it also brought an entirely new overworld, dungeons, villages, towns, storyline, one of the most complex side quests out of any game that I've ever played, and tons of new items and masks. All in just a year's time. Number 2. The Floating Island Many have speculated on what this exactly is. Is it simply the remains of an ancient civilization, similar to the city in the sky from Twilight Princess, in which it will only offer a simple dungeon to explore, or is it more important than that? Could it be an entire floating village like Skyloft in Skyward Sword, full of NPCs, side quests, shops, and possibly its own dungeon? After all, if the guardians and other evil creatures are taking over Hyrule, it would make sense for some of the villagers to escape back up to the sky as they once did before the events of Skyward Sword. Or I could just be overthinking things and this could simply be Beetle's new airship. Instead of having a tiny boat or a small airship, he now literally has an entire sky mall. For those getting mad at this ideal, 
it's just a joke, and the truth is, we have no idea what this is or how we would even get to it. For example, will it land and let us simply climb up? Some people suggest that you may use the heat from Death Mountain to fly there using the paraglider. Could we discover a new rune to give us an ability that allows us to get there? Will we simply claw shot our way there? Or my personal favorite, will we see the return of Loft Wings to make our way to the city in the sky? Number 3. The Master Sword and other non-breakable items. Featured prominently in the artwork is the Master Sword, but I don't want to give the sword all of the spotlight. To start, we see that weapons, shields, and other items can all be broken, giving them limited use. This isn't the first time we've seen this though. This goes as far back as Ocarina of Time, and maybe even further. But what comes to mind first is the Deku Shield, which can easily be burned, and the Giant's Knife, which is broken only after a few hits, opening up the side quest to obtain the unbreakable Big Goron Sword. This game also introduced clothes to give you status abilities like withstanding the heat in Death Mountain with the Goron's tunic or breathing underwater with the Zora's tunic. However, the closest we have seen item durability matching that of Breath of the Wilds is in Skyward Sword, the very last home Zelda title before Breath of the Wild. In this game, we are introduced to three separate lines of shields that have their own unique abilities and can each be upgraded to become even more durable. Then, we get the Hylian Shield. But it's more of a bonus item, it isn't really part of the main quest. So this makes me think, will we see similar items in Breath of the Wild? Will we see items that are indestructible? Perhaps taking something like the Fire Rod and upgrading a few times until it just can't break? Or maybe the unbreakable items are the ones found as dungeon items. Now this takes us back to the Master Sword. We see that it's already in a weakened state from the trailer. Maybe we're to restore it to its full power in the game to defeat Calamity Ganon and while restoring it, it becomes one of these unbreakable items. Perhaps we also discover the Hylian Shield somewhere as well, and it, as in Skyward Sword, is unbreakable. The idea of having breakable items is a great addition to the game. It makes it so we're not constantly using the same item and makes us become familiar with the huge variety of items the game has to offer. If we're using a one-handed sword and shield and the sword breaks, suddenly we're forced to use something like a two-handed axe and we're left to play in a different way as we would have before, as we now have no way of defending ourselves. But, to play the end game with an unbreakable sword, shield, and other items would make it easier for those going back to 100% the game. After all, how else are we supposed to shield surf down the entirety of Death Mountain while being chased by this giant guardian? Number 4, Overworld Bosses. Something kind of new to the Zelda series. We will have several mini bosses in the overworld. So far we have seen this giant horned beast, whatever it may be, an even larger rock creature known as Steptalus, this giant King Bokoblin, this even larger Stalfos, and this truly gigantic guardian scaling the side of Death Mountain. My question here is, are these all just what we would consider to be mini bosses? Or could any of them be a traditional main boss? And does this open the door to full boss fights in the overworld? Where defeating one would be akin to beating a boss in a traditional dungeon. Like for example beating Morpha in Ocarina of Time and it restoring water to a once dried up Lake Hylia. Or changing the season from winter to spring in Majora's Mask. If we fight these mini bosses or bosses in the overworld, will they simply respawn if we leave and come back? Or will it actually make an impact on the game in a memorable way? I'm sure the step talus and large horned beasts are a dime a dozen, but surely defeating this giant Stalfos or this larger than life guardian will have some effect on the game. Even if it's just restoring a village that was once being terrorized by these beasts. This could open the game up for more side quests and give you a sense of actually saving someone and having an impact on the overall overworld. After all, Miyamoto is quoted during an interview with saying, I can't talk much about it, but one of the things we're working on right now is that as you play, the world will change and be affected by what you choose to do. Number 5. Overworld Dungeons Imagine a dungeon that wasn't necessarily a dungeon, but acted as one. My buddy Nate, who runs Zelda Informer, brought this up. Imagine walking in an area akin to the Lost Woods, 
you start in an open field and as you would go deeper and deeper into the wooded area you start seeing small fun little overworld puzzles and the occasional group of enemies then once you are even deeper into the wooded area you all of the sudden are confronted by overworld puzzles that are actually making you stop and think on how to complete them and the enemies you face are becoming harder and harder when all of the sudden you're face to face with this giant Stalfos or another similar boss. Then, without realizing it, you just gradually completed a dungeon. But you never actually entered a dungeon. You were just trying to make it from point A to point B. It just turns out that the path you took took you through a dungeon without even giving you a hint. You were still outside, the overworld music didn't really change, there was no loading screen like when entering a house or a shrine. Now imagine this concept carried over to a desert area a water area, or even Death Mountain, and not just limited to the forest. What's up everyone, Jesse here, and I wanted to say thank you for checking out this video. If you have any of your own theories or questions about Breath of the Wild, leave them in the comments below for us to discuss, and we may feature them in a future video. If you're a fan of Zelda theories or videos similar to this, you can check out a great video here on Zelda Informer's channel about how Breath of the Wild may merge the split Zelda timelines. Or you can head on over to my channel, Game Over Jesse, and subscribe for Nintendo and Zelda news, rumors, theories, and discussions featuring other YouTubers like HMK, Vortexy Gaming, Zelda Master, McIntyre Productions, and the rest of the Chamber of Sages.